Hi everyone, Heather here from Creative Kiwi. This video shows how we make our In The Hoop animal bib. The sample that we show in this video is the little pig. Uh, the actual set itself includes a monkey and a teddy. Now these come in 5x7 hoop sizes and if you're not familiar with our large applique joining, you create designs larger than your hoop. So you can still use a 5x7 hoop and you can make normal size baby bibs with your 5x7 hoop. The set includes a larger size for a 6x10 or an 8x8 hoop. Um, the difference is basically uh, the, the length of the straps and there's the 6x10 design slightly deeper. All the size details and exact measurements are all available on the website. Brings me to another point, this video just shows the techniques involved. All the actual detail is in the um, instructions that are in your design file. When you unzip your files, you'll see the PDF. Next thing we look at is what sort of materials you can use. I've just used a cotton for the front of the bib and a flannel from the back. Um, just You can use flannel for both sides. You can pretty much use any fabric. You probably just need to be mindful of the bulk. If you're going to use a sort of a teary toweling or some kind of furry fabric, you may not need to use uh, batting on the inner. Um, with my cotton, I just use a batting, it's a fusible fleece, I don't iron it, and it's about maybe a quarter of an inch wide. With the stabilizers, because you're doing the straps in one hooping and the actual bib itself in, in the second hooping, there's two types of stabilizers needed. Uh, so for the straps you can use, I've used a cutaway, a soft cutaway, you could use tear away, um, basically uh, they're fully encased, the stabilizer is going to be fully encased. With the actual bib portion you need to use a water soluble stabilizer, uh, that's so you can remove all traces of the stabilizer. Anyway, let's get on to the actual making of the bib. The first thing you need to do is the straps first. So what you can do is you can hoop your um, probably two layers of your stabiliser. I've used cutaway. As you can see, I use the pinning method. Uh, I guess it just it's, makes for a much better stitch out. There is no movement in the hoop. So once you've got your stabiliser hooped properly, off to the machine and we're going to start. This sample shows the 5x7 size, so with that you actually need to do each strap in a separate hooping and then do the bib. So that's three hoopings for a 5x7 hoop. For a 6x10 you can actually do the straps in one hooping. Either way the straps are really quick to make, so just watch this and see how we go. The next step is to add your batting, and as I've talked about if you've got bulky fabric um, you may not need to even use batting but with the cottons you add the batting now you will notice I think I'll get a close-up later the batting actually um, is slightly smaller than the actual original stitch line that's just so we can get the bulk out of the seam allowances so once you've done that first stitching you remove the hoop from the machine and as you can see you're just cutting away the excess stabilizer and I think it shows you here yeah, see there's just that little gap, that's just the seam allowance. You can put your uh, hoop back onto the machine, you place your front fabric of the bib strap and you're just going to stitch around. Now the next step is an optional quilting, so um, I show it here on that. Now with the cottons it's just a, lo a lovely little stitch. Again, if you've got bulky fabrics you might not want to have the quilting, so I have uh, created it with a separate colour, therefore you can just skip the quilting if you don't want it. Now that's pretty much the front of the first strap stitched. And the next thing we do is just add the back of the strap. Now as you can see you've got the wrong side facing up and you're just going to stitch the last stitch to attach it and that goes around twice. Now that is a strap made. So as I say with the 5 by 7 you'll need to do that with the left strap and a right strap. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just um, cutting away the just the easy stabiliser. It's just again to remove all, as much bulk as we can from those straps. Um, I guess if you're using a tear away you could tear it away.
and the next thing to do is just uh, trim it. You're leaving about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And at the bottom there, uh, you don't need to add a seam allowance. That's actually, you can cut right up to the um, outline there. And then because, of course, we've got curves, carefully clip along all those edges. And this will make it uh, turn nicely and sit nicely. Now we just need to turn the strap to the right side. And see, I just use a, yeah, a pencil there to help ease out the seams. And I guess the most important step is to then take it off to the um, iron and press it. As you can see there, the 6x10 hoop, you do both straps just in the one hooping. So it's just slightly faster. We're ready now for the next step, and this is where you need to hoop your water-soluble stabiliser and two layers of it. So this is where we're going to do the actual piggy face. So once again, you've hooped your stabiliser and you're just stitching out the first line, which is the outline of the bib. Now what you'll see is there's two little marks, I guess, for want of a better word, at the top of the bib, and that's just what we're going to use later to help place our, our straps. Our next step is to add our batting and our front fabric, pop it into the hoop and stitch around to attach all of the layers. Next we're on to the actual, um, just the embroidery of the pig face. So we're starting off, there's an optional quilting there. I'm not going to make you watch the entire thing stitch out, but there's a couple of colours there. You've got the quilting, then you've got the white of the pig's eyes, the black of the eyes and the nose and the mouth, and then just the satin stitch. We're about to get onto the exciting bit now. So what you need to do is remove the hoop from the machine, and uh, what we're going to do is the backing for the piggy ears, because they're the 3D portion. So what we do is, you can see the marks on the back of the uh, stabiliser. You just need to put a piece of fabric right side facing out over those. Take them in place on the back of your hoop. Having fun with the tape there. And then just carefully take it back to your machine. Now what I like to do once I get it, um, the hoop back on the machine is with the stabiliser you can have a look underneath then we're just going to stitch that round which will attach just the ear pieces it goes around a couple of times to give you a crisp cutting edge and unfortunately there's quite a big jump there for your machine you can't do much else with that bit but there we go we're attaching the two ears Now, move the hoop from the machine again, and you know what we're going to do here, we're just going to remove that um, excess fabric from the ears. I get asked a lot what sort of scissors I use. Now, I think in this particular video, I'm using the um, duckbill scissors from Echidna. I really like them. Um, other times I just use my normal um, dressmaking scissors. I guess the main thing is that you have sharp scissors. So there's the back of the hoop and we need to turn over and just do the same on the front but it just needs to do from around the ear portion. You can see there I'm using my dressmaker scissors at this point. Right we're back to the machine. This is where, if, because the, the ears are sort of a 3D portion, you can uh, change the bobbin thread to match. And we're just going to do the satin stitch edging around the ears. So I think I fast forward here, I do. You can just see it just does that neat satin stitch. Now we're going to do the actual um, add the straps to the back of the bib. So here you can see. We've got the wrong side showing up, facing up, 
and you've got the right and the left side of the bib. So just be aware of it when you're doing it. Make sure you put them in the right place. There are marks on the back of the stabiliser, you can see, um, that just give you a guide as to where to fit those straps. Now I'm taping them in place. We're also going to put the actual back of the bib on. So again, you've got the, the back, the right side facing upwards. It's going to stitch around that edge. And again, I put some tape. Now the next step is just something I do when I've got a bit of bulk on the back of the hoop. Um, I just get a layer of that the actual Solvi plastic topper and I just kind of float it. So basically it's going to be a layer between the hoop, everything you've got attached to the hoop and the sewing machine. It's just an extra guard really to make sure nothing gets caught under there. So you're back at the machine and you're just doing a stitch round and whoops, I moved the camera there. Um, it just goes around twice. Now we're just going to cut away all that excess of the bib. Your straps are attached. Very, very close to finishing here. Don't clip the straps. And then we're just going to turn it over and do the same thing on the front of the hoop. Just removing all, all of the excess um, batting and fabric. There I go, changing scissors again. As I say, the sharpest ones are the ones that work the best. Now we're off to the machine and we're going to do the last colour. And that's basically just a um, satin stitch right around the entire head. And we've got, by the magic of video, we're fast forwarding right through there. And that's it. The bib is made. So we last time, let's take everything away from the hoop. I'm just going to cut around those edges. Now at this point, um, because you have been using water-soluble stabiliser in that bib portion, um, when that gets wet, it will shrivel up initially. So I do suggest that if you're giving this away to someone, um, that you do actually pop the bib in the wash first, and that way you're going to um, just put it through a normal uh, wash cycle, and that removes all traces of the stabiliser. And that way um, the bib, when it gets used, if it gets water on it, it won't shrivel up. As you can see here, we're just using um, a Q-tip and hot water, and we're just removing all of that excess stabiliser. And that's pretty much your bib finished. Now, I used um, cans, added cans, cam snaps um, for the closure. You can, if you don't have cam snaps, you can use Velcro. Um, if you haven't used cam snacks before, um, on our original bib, in the hoop bib, Kay did a brilliant video um, showing how to make this bib, but it also at the end of it, it shows how to attach cam snaps. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope you've learned something, and please make the bib. Please join our Creative Kiwi group and upload photos of the bibs. We love seeing what everyone does. Thank you. Bye.